Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up and connect the Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone with the Go XLR audio interface for live streaming. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below on where you can buy everything from a variety of online retailers. Now for the purposes of this video today, the Go XLR is already set up and connected to our laptop. It's already recording, so we can get straight to the microphone setup, connecting it and using the best settings possible for our live stream. So we're going to connect our microphone with an XLR cable. We don't recommend using an XLR to headphone jack cable and using the headset input on the Go XLR. You won't get the best result, if at all any results, so don't use a cable like this. Use a proper XLR to XLR cable. So now that I have that set up, I'm just going to put my headphones on and then we can set up the gain of this microphone. We open up this mic setup window here. We do want to make sure that condenser is selected. When you select condenser here, that'll tell the audio interface to send this microphone 48 volts of phantom power that it needs in order to activate or turn on. This microphone will not work without that setting selected. Once that's selected, we can uh, set the gain of the microphone. We're going to move the gain all the way up to about 37, 38 dB. That's where I need it to be for me. As you look at the meter here, you can tell that it's right on the upper end of what it considers to be good. You don't want it going into that loud section. If it goes in by a bar or two, that's okay. But if you're regularly going past that, then it is a little excessive. You will experience peaking or clipping, and it'll show you a little warning here to indicate that you do have the gain set too high. So when you're speaking naturally at your most commonly spoken uh, kind of volume that you do want to make sure that you're right in this good section and then you can hit OK. Next, let's talk about the noise gate. The job of the noise gate is to remove background noise from your recording. What it actually does is you set a threshold and when you speak, you break that threshold and it turns the microphone on. It's kind of an automated way to mute and unmute your mic. This is really common on something like miking a drum kit where you want the microphone above each tom only to activate when that tom is struck. You don't want your floor tom microphone picking up your snare drum. That's not a good thing. You want each microphone just to hear the instrument in front of it. Now they've added this. This is becoming more and more common for vocal microphones. It's not a feature that I love if you're doing talking head video like I'm doing in this one because you can hear that noise gate clicking in and out. And oftentimes it's more distracting than it's worth. That being said, that clicking in and out when the mic activates and deactivates, depending on the threshold, that is masked by game noise. So it is a helpful tool when you're live streaming. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. Here you want to move the threshold up until you're regularly exceeding the threshold and turning the microphone on. I'm going to show you what it sounds like if you set it too aggressively. If you set it too aggressively, you can hear it clicking out as I'm speaking and that's not a good thing. So I prefer to have it somewhere between minus 40 and minus 45. This means for me, whenever I'm speaking comfortably, even if I do get a little more soft spoken, the mic activates every single time. You never want to set this so aggressive that it misses syllables and misses words. Uh, so that's why I recommend there. With the attenuation, I recommend keeping it between 50 and 75%. If you leave it to 100% attenuation, you really do hear the microphone turn off. It, the attenuation is basically how much of the microphone are you turning off. So when I have it set to 50%, if I go quiet for a little bit, it'll only reduce the background noise by 50%, which makes it sound a little bit more natural when you break the noise gate and click it on and off. So that's a tool that you can use there. I don't recommend setting it to 100% unless you have some really specific goal that you're going for. Um, so somewhere between minus 40 and 45 on the threshold and the attenuation at 50 to 75 depending on your preference. Now, like I said earlier, I don't like this for spoken word video because you can hear it clicking in and out. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to turn it off now just so you don't hear that clicking in and out as we move on through the other settings. Next, let's talk about the EQ and the goal of the EQ. So a lot of the times you'll buy a microphone because you like the way it sounds. You buy the AT2020, the NT1, the SM7B, whatever microphone you buy, you buy because the way it sounds. So if you're just doing a video like this one, 
I would leave the EQ flat and just let the microphone do its work. You bought that microphone for a reason because the way it sounds will let it do its thing. That being said, when you're mixing multiple input sources, you want to try to give everything some EQ space. You want everything to fall in a zone. Think of it like mixing a band on stage. The acoustic guitar, the kick drum, the piano, the vocals, they're all kind of squeezed in a very unique frequency ranges. That way you can sit back from a mix and if they're all set to the same volume, you can hear each instrument because they're restricted to certain frequency ranges. That's what we're going to recommend that you do for your live stream uh, with this video and the settings that we recommend. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're basically going to build our own high pass filter here by rolling off the low, the 31.5 hertz, all the way down. The 63 hertz can come to about minus 2 or 3. So we want to roll in the low end of this microphone. There's nothing useful in those frequency ranges for your voice. This basically takes your voice out of everybody's subwoofer. You don't really want your vocal in their sub anyway. It's not useful to have it, and it just makes a sub that's more muddy sounding. You want the sub to be focused on game noise, explosions, music, that type of thing. So there's, not, there's no point keeping those frequencies in the low end for your vocal mics. We're just going to roll them off, clean up the mix a little bit. The next thing that we're going to do, if the EQ allowed me to roll off 400 hertz, I would, but we kind of have to round here. So I'm going to go minus 2 on the 500 hertz. This is a low mid frequency range. By opening this up a little bit, we're going to allow more game noise in this slot, and it will actually make your microphone quite a bit more clear sounding. It just gets rid of that low mud. So by reducing the 500 hertz, we do create more space in the mix as well. Next, we want to bump the 2 kilohertz by 2 and the 4 kilohertz by 2. With these settings here, you'll create more vocal clarity. This is where most of the vocal clarity comes from. If you're a female, it'll be a little bit closer to 3.5 or 4K. If you're male, it's somewhere between 1.5 to 2K. So you may not have to bump both of these. I bump both of them for me, and I find that it does open up the microphone quite a bit. After that, we can reduce 16 kilohertz all the way down. Again, most vocal mics, if you're miking somebody for vocal, like a Shure SM58 or something like that, there's a cliff after 10K anyway. A microphone like the AT2020 is a little sustained more on the brighter frequencies like this, but just get it out. Uh, make more room for those frequencies on your music or whatever. It doesn't contribute a lot to vocals. It just creates more sources in that space. So I like to roll it out completely. If you don't like how aggressive it is, then you can reduce it. You can go minus four or something like that. Meet me in the middle, somewhere like that. So if you look at this EQ, we've rolled off the low end made more room for game noise. We got rid of that low mid at 500 hertz, create a little bit more space in your vocal. And then we pop 2 and 4K to create more vocal clarity. This will really help your vocal stand out in the mix without having to turn up the fader to make it louder. That's really what we're trying to do. You don't want volume. You want to strategically use the frequencies that are coming from your microphone to help you achieve what you're getting going for with your online live stream. So that's going to help clean up your mix quite a bit right there. The next tool that we have is a compressor. Now the job of the compressor is to make your loudest parts quieter and your quietest parts a little bit louder. You're narrowing the dynamic range. You don't want your voice to be going up and down so much that somebody has to change the volume of their live stream when they're listening to you. If you get mad and you rage quit, you don't want to blow their eardrums. And likewise, if you get immersed into a game and you get a little bit quieter, more nuanced, you don't want them to have to turn up their volume. You want to manage that for them. Think of a compressor as almost automated volume mixing. That's not how it works, but that's a very simplified way of thinking about it. You want to just compress it into a tighter window so you're not moving your fader up and down the whole time. What we're going to do here is we're going to reduce the threshold to minus 15. So we move the upper end all the way down to minus 15. This means that whenever we speak, whenever our microphone gets louder than negative 15, everything above that will get compressed. I recommend compressing it 3.2 to 1 or 4 to 1. Either one of those settings work well. People say that that's subtle, but think about it. Every time that you exceed 15 dB, we're still compressing all of that at 3 to 1. That's quite aggressive. And people that recommend 6 to 1, 7 to 1, 8 to 1, that's like you're basically putting a limiter into your microphone, and that's not really the goal of compression. You just want to slow it down, narrow those 
loud parts of your voice or whatever you're doing and put it into a tighter range. So that's how you squish the top of the microphone in terms of volume. Now we do want to make those quieter parts a little bit louder. We want to push it and inch it a little bit closer to the compressor so the compressor is working for us. And we'll do that by adding makeup gain. So we can add four or five decibels of makeup gain or six, some, somewhere like that. Somewhere between five to seven, I would say, is a really good setting for you to use. And as you heard, that did just make me a little bit louder. So now if this thing had a compression meter, we would see it the compression the compressor kicking in unfortunately the go xlr doesn't have a meter like that that'd be an awesome feature if they built it in so you can actually see what you're doing here but if you couldn't hear it you can hear that compressor working and just compressing that stuff between minus 15 and minus 8 probably and just keeping it in that window for us which is absolutely perfect when we go to connect this to obs for our live stream so those are the settings i would recommend for the compressor Next, we have the de-esser. The de-esser has been on the whole time. What it does is exactly what it sounds like. It removes the S's, the mouth noise, the clicks, the pops, the T sounds, what are known as sibilants uh, with the microphone and frequencies. It rounds them off to make them a little bit more easy to listen to when you're listening to a live stream for three hours. Without it, I'm going to turn it off here just so you can hear it for the first time because it's been on the whole time. You will hear a lot more breathing, mouth noise, clicking, S's. They're much more pronounced with this turned off. So you do want to put that back on. Now, if you have a Go XLR Mini, you don't have this option, which is really too bad. It's a really nice feature to have, but uh, they just didn't have the power, I guess, to build it in because the Go XLR Mini is just bus powered. So it does require that extra processing power, I'm sure. So somewhere around 50 to 60% I recommend for the de -esser. actually between maybe 40 and 60%. I like setting it right at 50. I think it sounds good for my voice. So those are the settings I would use. So if we're doing a live stream, the threshold on the gate would be somewhere around minus 40 to minus 45 with an attenuation between 50 and 75%, depending on what you're going for. The EQ, we have that high pass filter that rolls in. So minus nine, minus three, zero, zero, minus two, on the 500 hertz frequency, one kilohertz can stay even, and then we pop two and 4K up plus two, and then we roll off the top. That creates that space for the game noise. That's really what we're aiming for. And the compressor is set relatively conservative, so we're not over compressed, overly chunky. It sounds natural, but it's a tool that narrows that dynamic range for us. It will help our stream sound more consistent over a long haul. And the de -esser just makes it more palatable, easier to listen to, uh, removes mouth noise, S's and T's from your mix. If you have any questions about the settings that we recommend in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have a bunch of setup videos for the AT2020 specifically with recommendations on how to make this microphone sound better. Those are also linked down in the description below beside the pricing for everything here. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.